Hey friends, how are we? This is, uh, I haven't done a, a recap on the boat. Now there's been a, a bunch of new subscribers come in and I'm sure some of them have run power saw before or they do run power saw. Now this will probably go against everything you've ever learned about filing a power saw. But I've been filing a power saw steady, steady, steady for 20 years. Uh, high production falling, um, firewood like 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 steady like going it, in the beginning that's all I did was firewood so I learned how to file a power saw <laughs> cutting firewood you, that's where you learn I in my opinion that's where everybody learns to, to file a power saw is cutting firewood because it's no not always clean out there on the firewood now it's raining like mad so I'm just gonna wipe this raindrop off here so what I want to do friends is I, I have a thing called the boat I call it the boat and lots of my subscribers you already know been some new people come in and I want them to see kind of what I'm doing and I'm gonna put you closer that you can kind of see what what I'm doing here watch the angle of the file and I I, I tell you uh, there's been lots of subscribers that have tried it and have said to me Billy Ray I've been filing a power saw for 10 years or 20 years and I tell you that boat has changed it for me completely and I say this will go against everything you've ever learned but what does that matter? It doesn't because it's tried, true, and tested by many friends that I know, Old Faller. No Faller showed me this trick. You can get the same result by just going like this. You, you, you can, you, you can get the same result. But if you think about the physics of this, it, it's, it's actually amazing because what it does is it gets the gullet. You end up with the exact same result, but quicker and more efficient. So what it does, as it goes down so now what you're doing is you're peeling the gullet you're on the gullet right now we got a, one of the t-shirts is gonna be get the gullet guaranteed <laughs> right yeah so it, it it allows you to get that outside wood which is here okay I'm gonna put this up close watch you see what I mean it allows you and then as you straighten out it gets the middle of the gullet and the inside of the gullet do, do you know what I'm saying friends so yeah like it, it does it works really good so I'm just at a job uh, down the street from my house a lady uh, an old friend of mine oh I don't want to hook onto that earmuff because that'll screw things up um, so I just want to get a bit of an edge because I got to cut some small firewood and I want it to uh, I want it to grab I might even hit the rakers a little bit but but this is the boat and you only do it for a few, like, like watch, you know, maybe three, and then I start getting straight. And what it ends up being, let's see where am I at right now. I look pretty good. My, I got, I got a nice C going on. So, but still, I could be down. You see? So you see what, what's kind of happening? It rips that gullet right out, and then the last few strokes. You do them normal and it cleans up the top of the tooth and I tell you friends hey if you want to cut want to get your chain sharp in a, in a, in a, a, a even if you just went down like this friends you know down and then so the boat doesn't have to be like 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 this it can be like this do you know what I mean and straight so it just it gives a really good edge I know that Dan Hargrave, my buddy from uh, from England, he's got a great tree service in England. Great guy to watch, good skilled fella. He he now he's adapted it into his into his program, and he loves it. Uh, there's been some other fellas who have contacted me and said, "Bucking <laughs> that, that you know, getting the gullet out," and it's for that purpose, friends. It is actually for that purpose. It gets the gullet. You see what I'm doing? So, like I say, 
You're probably looking at this going, that is crazy. What a silly bugger that Billy Ray is. Look what he's doing. Why is he doing that? Well, there's a reason for it. And I'll show you when we go over and cut this wood. Well, I think most of you have seen my book. This file's in rough shape. It is, it's in rough shape. So I'm kind of laying on it hard. You'll notice I'm, I'm kind of, I'm on it hard because it's not pulling. You don't have to push on a file that hard if it's in good shape. I might even swap out real quick. It's kind of, I think it's, it's got a much better edge on it here. Yeah, it does. Yeah, there we go. You see, so if you got a good file, you really don't need to push that hard. Mind you, this one's got a couple filings on it too. Okay, so I wanted to show this to the new subscribers. They probably haven't seen it. We call it the boat. And it, it's all in all to get that, to get that gullet out. Let's show you this here. Look over here. See here? Can you see right there, friends? Okay. Sorry guys, let's put this back normal here so you guys can kind of see what's going down. There, how about that? Okay. So, when we do that, and then we finish up our few strokes, take a look. See? On his chest, he walks away in confidence because he knows his boat's the best. He knows his boat's the best. He knows his boat's the best. I'm kind of going fast here because I got to get on cut here. But I wanted to share that, okay? Here's, a, here's the other side, friends. See what the file's doing? See, do a couple of those and then straighten it out. And you're cutting. It's that simple. Let's do another one. Is that the truck moving? It is, isn't it? So it just it wipes out the whole gullet. Not just part of it. Not the inside, not the outside. The whole freaking thing. Oh yeah. Look, friends, I gotta show you this. Well, the woodman wears a smirk and flicks that whistle on his chest. He walks away in confidence because he knows his boat's the best. He knows his boat's the best. He knows his boat's the best. And that's, that's the, the boat we call it. A few the new subscribers probably have come across it. See, look at what the file's doing. Watch. Going for a boat ride. And then once you do that five or six times, or depending on how much of the gullet you gotta grab, you straighten out. See? We straighten that file out. Get our edge. This one needs it. You can tell it needs it. Big time. Finish up. My eyes are bad. There we go. This file's getting rocked too. So like I say, I know it goes against what you learned, but that means it's probably a good thing. <laughs> it's like our education system. Over and out. Okay, friends, have you ever seen one of these things? They're imperative to your cut. Imperative. So, listen. To the new subscribers who don't really know me that well. Okay, I'm really big on bar maintenance and filing and sharpness. You don't have to have a hot rod saw, even though I love hot rod saws, but 
you need it to be sharp. That's what you need. You need your saw to be sharp. So here's a raker gauge. I don't, the, the next time I hear somebody say, oh, your teeth are not the exact same size, you're going to be cutting on an angle. You're going to be cutting over to the side. Uh, well, I don't really know what I'll do. Not much, probably, except shake my head. Check it out. Raker gauge, okay? Tooth, tooth, raker. If this tooth, well, here we are. Here, here it is. This tooth is, is quite a bit smaller than this one, actually. It just is. It is. Now, here's, here, here's, the, here's the scenario. Look at, here's my raker gauge, okay? If you don't think, I mean, look at this. Look at this, friends. I just took a couple swipes off that. Well, look at this one. Like, it's high. Like, I had to take a few more strokes in order for this to be the same. Now, now, hear me out here. This tooth and this tooth are going to be hitting the wood at the exact same time. Correct? They are. Because this thing told it so to do that. But if you're just going along by hand and, oh, well, this, you know, look, well, I'm just going to give these, a, I'm going to uh, file my rakers. You're going to be, you're, you're not cutting to your optimal. You're just not. It, it, you're going to be rough and bouncing all over the place. Like, look at this. This is very important, friends. I'm not kidding you. It, it's all about the raker gauge. Like, look how much this has taken off on some of these. I haven't played with this chain for a while. This chain was actually hanging up. So, you know, every tooth isn't going to get hit the same amount. You're going to hit a rock. Sometimes you hit one side of the chain. Is that not true, friends? We do. We hit, sometimes we hit one side of the chain and we don't hit the other one at all. So we're going to clean up the side we really hit. We're going to file the rock out and then we're going to, we're going to file the other side all the way back as many strokes as we did. No, please don't do that, friends. Don't do that. If you got to file the one side 15, 20 strokes to get it sharp because you actually hit a rock, do that. Then on the other side that you didn't hit very hard, just freaking file it till it's sharp. It could be five strokes. Please don't, don't waste your time anymore with that stuff. Use one of these. Listen to me, I'm almost pleading with you. I'm just trying to save you some freaking time. <laughs> Seriously is what I'm doing. Oh man, you don't, you're not gonna be cutting in circles or cutting round. They're cutting, you know, I mean, oh, that drives me nuts. And and all it is is it's guys that have heard something or or, or people that, uh, you know, if you're cutting, if you're cutting on an angle, your filing's whacked or your bar's not right. That's what it is. It's not because your teeth aren't the same size. That's not what it is. Well, it could be that if you're not using one of these, most definitely. That makes sense because you're going to be pulling on one side, not on the other. But if you're pulling the exact same size chip, it has no, it has no course but to go straight. Right, friends? So you just watched me file my chain. You don't need to watch me finish the rakers. But all these rakers are now going to be the exact same height off of the, off of the top of the tooth, which is called your working corner. Right? which is your working corner right there. That's your working corner. So when these are below that, this grabs wood. Now, boom, this one, boom. They all grab wood at the same time. Now, if I was to leave this one up, you can actually, look, it won't even go by there. Look at that, friends. Look at, it won't even go by. Is that working for you guys? Look, it's that high. So we stroke this down, okay? Let's just, for instance, let's take a look at the next one now. Let's see where it's at. Well, it's definitely not as high. Most definitely not as high. Couple of strokes and she's in lay, okay? So, friends, extremely important, this raker gauge for a bunch of different things. A bunch of different things. And what it is, the most important thing is, is that you're gonna be cutting smooth, okay? Does that make sense? Who's going? I might have a line on a on an old home light XL 130. Beautiful saw, kind of like the 76.
Okay, so is this making sense, friends? Hey, as I've been cutting like this forever, and it just. I've never, I remember years ago, I would be cut on an angle. I'd be, what's going on here? Why is this doing this? And old Bear Claw would say, buddy, you need to grind your bar. Your, 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 your tooth is, your power saw is laying over to one side. Your tooth is, your chain is laying over to one side. And I grind my bar and squeeze my bar. And hey, imagine that. I'm cutting straight again. So bar maintenance, very important. Very important. Okay, so we're just getting this online. These rakers were high. They were high, but they weren't all high the same height, I'll tell you that. I wish I could show you kind of uh, some teeth that were... People, you, please do me a favor. Do not get out your micrometers and start measuring your teeth to see if they're the same. This one is small. I remember this now, actually. This was on a site where we had fencing all through the trees. This thing's way down. It's a teeny little tooth. Like it, it is. It's a small little tooth. But do you think that I'm going to file every freaking tooth to that size? You're nuts. I'd break it off before I do that. And file the raker down so it's not even there. Don't worry about doing that. Now. There. This chain's ready to go. Now I want to show you something. I know I'm rambling. See the size of that tooth? Okay. Let's just look. Let's, let's use this. Okay, is there any lines on here we can use? Here. Look at. Well. Now look at this one. It, oh my goodness. Look, friends. It fell right inside the circle. Can you see this? Look. Right inside the circle. That one's not going to go. Almost. That one went. That one went. That one's not going to go. It's too big. Oh, sorry. I'll bring the camera along. That's not going to go. And nor is that. Look at that one. That's not even a chance that's going to go. You think I'm going to be cutting on an angle? Not a chance. I could cut into the biggest piece of wood on this property and it would cut straight through. Please, friends, don't waste your time doing that anymore. It is a waste of time. <laughs> it is. Back from it because it's the truth. Let's go cut a couple trees down. What have I got for gas in this thing? I wish I had bigger wood right now to show you that, that this theory is the way to go, but I don't, I'm not into any big wood right now. But what I will show you, okay, we got a couple of dead trees over here with my friend. Um, and a nice thing about that raker gauge, friends, is you know you're cutting bang on. Do you know what I mean by that? Like you're on. So, well, here's a little thing we can cut. That's uh, pretty rotten. I'm not cutting that. It's got sand all over it.